We are closing in on two weeks until the Cowboys kick off their training camp in Oxnard, California. The 2023 team will be together in pads for the first time this season, which means we're going to be breaking down every rumor, play, and matchup from Cowboys camp. But it's important to know what we're looking for. Training camp is going to give us a really good idea of how the coaching staff views each of these guys, where they line up, what team they're working with, and so much more. I'll be talking about everything that you need to know from Cowboys camp, so make sure you are subscribed. But until then, this is the ultimate Dallas Cowboys training camp preview for the defense. Let's get into it. There's no better place to start than the defensive trenches, a unit that was amazing at rushing the passer last year, but not as amazing in stopping the run. To fix that perceived issue this offseason, the Cowboys went out and invested in a first round defensive tackle, a big body that can eat up blocks on the interior in Mozzie Smith. Although it wasn't a flashy pick and probably is about the least flashy you can get, it was a pressing issue for this team last year and they found a way to improve the defensive interior. But Mozzie won't be the only big body in the middle. The Cowboys also re-signed Jonathan Hankins this offseason after they traded for him in 2022. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see much of Hankins due to an injury, but with him and Mozzie in the middle, I think we'll see improvements in this defense's run game. Other names along that line include Osa Odigizua, who I am personally a huge fan of, especially if he can keep improving his pass rushing ability. Rotational pieces on the interior also include names like Chauncey Golston, Quentin Bohana, Neville Gallimore, and your fourth round pick in 2023, Junior Fehoko, each of whom will be fighting for a roster spot come August. Guys like Gallimore and Bohana just haven't played up to expectations of where they were drafted. Gallimore was a third round pick and Bohanna was a sixth round pick. I think we need to keep a close eye on both of those guys because they are potential cut candidates at the end of camp. Although I do like the mix that the Cowboys have at defensive tackle, the defensive ends is where you really see the depth along that line. Demarcus Lawrence on the left side and Micah Parsons on the right. Behind each of them, you have Dorrance Armstrong and Sam Williams. The craziest part is I think a lot of teams around the league would be happy with Sam Williams and Dorrance Armstrong as their starting defensive ends. But on this Cowboys defense, they are rotational pieces. We all know that Micah is going to do what Micah does best. Lawrence isn't much of a sack machine anymore, but is an elite run defender. Sam Williams showed promise last season with his limited opportunities, and Armstrong had what seemed like a very quiet eight and a half sacks last year. To finish out the defensive ends, Dallas will have Dante Fowler as well as a rotational piece. Hopefully the Cowboys defensive line can hold up for the linebackers because we've talked about this group in another video. And to be honest, this is my biggest worry for the Cowboys defense. The linebacker room is pretty thin. The way that Dan Quinn likes to play defense is with two traditional off the ball linebackers with a safety sliding down into the box and being the team's nickel linebacker. So, technically, they'll have two guys on the field for a majority of defensive snaps. Those two names are likely Leighton Van Der Esch and Damone Clark. Like I've mentioned before, Van Der Esch has health concerns, and Damone Clark has his health concerns and lack of experience as well. Behind them, you have Jabril Cox, DeMarvion Overshown, the third round pick this year, and Devin Harper, a late round pick in 2022. If you take Van Der Esch out of that linebacker room, all of those guys I listed have less than 550 career snaps amongst themselves. And I get that you want young guys to play. The best way for them to get better is to be on the field getting real NFL snaps. But man, that can come back to bite you in the foot if you're not careful. For some reason, this coaching staff just has not shown any interest in putting Jabril Cox on the field. Devin Harper isn't ready to play legitimate snaps, and DeMarvion Overshone is still an athletic but raw player at the position. So I am a bit concerned. I'm not giving up on them, and I'm not saying that the Cowboys defense is completely screwed. But let me know what you think. 
What is your biggest concern on this Cowboys defense? Is it the linebacker position? Is it the defensive interior? Or is it another position group that we're about to talk about? Let me know down in the comments below. Let's discuss. Next up, we have one of my favorite position groups on this team, and that is the cornerback room. Much like we saw with the wide receivers, the Cowboys went out and got a proven veteran guy to play opposite of their blooming cornerstone piece. For this occasion, it's Stefan Gilmore across from Trayvon Diggs. Although Gilmore will turn 33 right after the start of the season, his play sure hasn't showed much of a decline. In total last season, both run and pass snaps, Gilmore played over 1,000 total snaps, allowing just two touchdowns and picking off two more passes. So he hasn't hit that cliff quite yet. And to be honest, I don't think we're going to see it this season either. Last season, Gilmore was the number one corner in Indy, but in Dallas, he'll likely take a lot of number two guys with Diggs facing off against team's number ones. It's going to be a tricky situation for quarterbacks. Who are you going to throw the ball to? While the top two corners are set, one of the biggest matchups I'll be watching in camp is the battle between Jordan Lewis and Deron Bland. Lewis is a longtime veteran for this team, Bland a fifth round pick that showed as much promise as you could hope for from any rookie. Much less a late round pick. Lewis is coming off an injury, so keep an eye out for how the Cowboys manage him as camp goes on. Me personally, I think Deron Bland won that job last year. Bland would have to lose that job himself for Lewis to take the field as a starter. After that, Dallas will have a number of guys fighting to make the roster. The Cowboys sixth round pick in 2023, Eric Scott, Kelvin Joseph, who I think a lot of people have already written off, Nashawn Wright, and then Israel Mukwamu, who we didn't see much of last year, but played well enough to be a piece in this defense this year. This is one of the most intriguing groups to keep an eye on. Any of those guys that I just named could be potential cut candidates. So I can't wait to see how it all unfolds during Cowboys camp. Last, but certainly not least, is the safety room. Your top three are set with Donovan Wilson, J. Ron Curse, and Malik Hooker. All guys that have three years in Dan Quinn's system and have played their parts in two very good Cowboys defenses. We can't bank on all three staying healthy for 17 games. So behind them, the Cowboys have undrafted safety Marquise Bell, who did have a draftable grade coming out of school in 2022. And people around the organization seem to really like him. You also have Tyler Coyle, who is probably one of the fastest and most athletic guys on this team and has been around for quite some time. Hopefully all of your safeties stay healthy, but I really did like Marquise Bell coming out of college. And I would like to see him get some opportunity to be a part of a rotation. Nothing crazy, just a few snaps here and there to see what you have in the young player. All in all, barring injury, the safety room is pretty much set in stone. I can't remember the last time that I was this excited about a Cowboys defense. The defensive line and the pass rush ability just matches so well with the back end of that defense, especially with a solid number one and two corner in coverage. It's going to be hard to move the ball on this team through the air consistently. I think this defense could take it to the next level if they can shut down the run and force teams into third and long situations. That's where they win big. There were just too many times last year that they were just gashed for big plays on the ground, giving up easy first downs, giving up five to seven yards on first down, being able to retain Hankins and drafting a guy like Mozzie Smith should really help in that department. Before we go, of course, we have to talk about Dan Quinn because he is going to have a ton of resources at his disposal. Based on what we've seen from him up to this point, there's no reason to think that he can't put together one hell of a defense, maybe even a chance championship caliber defense. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please make sure you go check out my offensive preview. Camp is super, super close, so you better go ahead and watch it now. Get caught up on all the position battles going on on that side of the ball. I'll see you over there. I love you all. Bye. Go, hustle, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Bye.